Welcome to everybody who is joining us today. We are so grateful that you're here. I am Lynn Turknett, and this is my longtime husband and business partner, Bob Turknett. I'm happy to be here, and I'll tell you, this is the first time I've had on a skirt since March 13th. <laughs> this time last year, we thought we'd be at the aquarium today celebrating the Leadership Character Awards, and we hope to be there again in 2022. We believe that leadership is grounded in character, and the awards began in 2003 to recognize and celebrate leaders of character. And since that time, we've recognized hundreds of nominees who live and lead in accordance with our leadership character model. Recognizing those leaders has been one of the highlights and joys of our lives, personally and professionally. We're grateful today, though, to have the technology to be able to recognize our Leadership Character Lifetime Achievement Award honoree this year, Hala Modelmog. We thank her for allowing us to do that. We thank all of you who are here today. We thank all of you who have supported and sponsored the event and given financially. We want to thank everybody at TLG who has worked so hard to make this happen and give a special note of thanks to Susan Hitchcock, who has been the wind beneath the wings of the awards since she thought of the idea in 2003. Well, we are very excited to be able to honor Hala Malamog with the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award for Leadership Character today. Whether in leading companies, nonprofits, or philanthropy, Hala is always all in. When I think of Hala, I'm remem reminded of the famous quote, when Ia Hutton talks, people listen. Whenever I mention Hala's name to anyone who knows her, they always spontaneously talk about her exceptional leadership qualities, leadership character qualities. None of us get to choose our reputation. And if Hala could, I don't think it would be any different than what others already say about her. She's lived her life in a way that really reflects her core values and her authenticity. And that's a real tribute to her. She genuinely walks the talk. Once more, thank you so, so much, Hala, for allowing us to honor you with this very special Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you. I commend the TurkNet Leadership Group and congratulate Hala Mottemog on her selection as the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. Hala deserves this award based on her distinguished career and in my mind, what sets her above and apart as a leader is that she sees how the world is changing and how it needs to change, and then provides the leadership necessary to meet the future in the most productive way possible. I was particularly fortunate to have a front row seat as she led the transformation of the Metro Atlanta Chamber into a much more dynamic and progressive chamber. Her proactive work to make Atlanta a national model for women and minority-owned businesses will serve us well for decades to come and make us just a better city, better in business and better as a society and a community. Hala, thank you and congratulations. So proud of you. First, I want to thank the Turkneck Leadership Group for honoring my friend and one of the most dedicated persons I know, Hala Matamog, with this Lifetime Achievement Award. She has had a phenomenal career that has led to many firsts. You see, she was the first woman to lead an international restaurant company and the first woman to become the president and CEO of the Metro Atlanta Chamber. 
There's actually something to be said about when you are the first. It speaks volumes to your determination, your resilience, and your grit. And most importantly, to your ability to overcome obstacles and persevere despite the challenges before you. I've witnessed these characteristics in Hala as she's led the Metro Atlanta Chamber. They are the characteristics I have come to admire. And despite her one little flaw, having attended that little school in Athens known as UGA, I count her as a close friend and confidant. Hala, I am so proud of you and can't wait to see the great work that you will continue to do. Hi, Hala. I have to admit to you in front of all these people, you're who I want to be when I grow up. Of course you're receiving this award. You are fierce. You show up for what you believe in, with your time, with your really amazing social capital. You care about the arts, so what do you do? You join a board. No, not enough. You become chair of that board. Wait, not enough. You become the CEO of the Art Center. You show up. You are my hero. Congratulations. Congratulations, Halo, on being awarded the Leadership Character Lifetime Achievement Award. I really can't think of anyone that's any more deserving. As I've told you several times, you're a rock star in my eyes. And for a couple of reasons. One is I could always count on you. If you said you were going to do something or your team was going to do something, it was done. It was just automatic, and uh, I really admire that about you. Second, you've spent your entire lifetime of really putting the needs of others in front of yourself. And that is just an amazing characteristic. And it also makes you very effective because then you would call me up and ask me to do things. And as I've told you, it's very hard to say no to Halo just based on uh, your accomplishments and what you have done for me and for others. So again, very, very deserving. Congratulations. I couldn't be happier for you. I'm Ty Modelmog, Hala's son. And I'd like to begin by saying what an absolute pleasure it's been to spend some time thinking about the many reasons why my mom's earned this award. It's prompted me to dig into why I beam with pride when I'm inevitably asked, Modelmog, are you related to Hala? The question comes up a lot as I may try to make my own way in this world. The question is frequently followed by, how does she do it? It here refers to the relentless energy she commits to her professional, civic, and family lives, and the success she's earned in all three realms. Growing up, I was too close in to really know how to answer the question. I could only confirm that the rumors were true. She really did make it home for dinner every night. She really did pour hours every week into helping us with homework. She really did never stop finding ways to expose my sister and me to new experiences. I've got a better vantage point now on how she does it. As a parent myself, I've loved watching her with my daughter, some of the most tender moments of fatherhood for me. And I think that much of what makes her such a wonderful grandparent has also driven her to achievement in other realms. So I want to explain to you how incredible she is with my daughter. And I think that those of you who know her in civic or professional contexts will recognize these very same qualities. It comes down to three things, her capacity to dream, her curiosity, and her generosity. My mother dreams in resplendent detail. When she learned she was having a granddaughter, she called me the next day to say that her arms were physically aching in anticipation of holding her. I think this illustrates my mom's capacity for imagining in perfect detail just how great something can be. When you can physically sense what it is you're looking forward to or fighting for, you fight that much harder and you enjoy the fruits of your labor that much more. But if she were merely a dreamer, someone else's son would be talking to you right now. So it's more than that. And as I said before, 
Her, her curiosity is a big reason why I have this privilege. Just after learning that she was having a granddaughter, my mom devoured every resource on childhood development within reach. Within two weeks, she'd read three books. Thereafter, I'd make an offhand comment about some other book I'd read, and she'd absorb every word of that one too. I'm not, not exaggerating, and I'm not teasing. It was so touching, and it's been so helpful to have someone around who's made herself into an expert by the sheer force of her relentless curiosity. And I can tell you she's approached every job, every board seat with that same curiosity. I'm sure that right now, her gigantic handbag is overflowing with binders of industry reports, income statements, any information she can get her hands on relating to tasks ahead. She loves to learn, and the people who depend on her are better off for it. As powerful a force as that curiosity is, it might be her generosity that's most directly responsible for her achievements. The time she carves out for our daughter and the time she thrusts into that time and the energy she thrusts in that time is superhuman. I can't count the hours she spent hunched over helping Mahala walk, feeding her, dancing with her, changing diapers, no matter how many other able-bodied adults are around. She always finds energy to give Mahala, and not just for the fun stuff. She helps with joy and without reservation. She enriches her professional relationships with the same generosity, always making time, always finding the energy to focus, to listen, to offer advice, to make an introduction. She's a giver. And as she was coming up in her career, her colleagues must have seen this must have recognized that she creates value beyond herself and decided that's who I want to lead. Of course, it's empty to celebrate my mom's lifetime of achievement without also celebrating my father, Steve, and my sister, Kirsten. Critical and both enabling and inspiring. My dad's her most trusted advisor, a brilliant mind that sees the risks where she sees opportunity. He's as giving of his time as she is of hers, freeing up the mind space and the hours for her to contribute so much to those around her. My sister, I'd argue, knows her better than anyone else. It might surprise you to know that this, but even Hala needs nurturing, TLC, reviving, and my sister's long cracked the code. She's the best in the world at it, and I don't think we'd have so much to celebrate if not for Kirsten. All this to say, there's a lot within my mom, the dreaming, the curiosity, the generosity that puts her in a position to deserve this award, but she's made us a big part of that too. And I really couldn't be prouder of her. Congratulations, mom. It is a great honor to be able to offer some reflections on Hala Model Mog. Hala was one of the first people I met when I arrived in Atlanta. She gave me a tour of the Alliance Theater to try to sell me on the city. And what was clear was her poise, passion, and commitment to the arts. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but what I was seeing was actually a passion and a commitment to the broader community of Atlanta. Now, during my three plus years as head of the Atlanta Fed, I have had the immense privilege of seeing Hale at work. I've seen her manage a broad and diverse corporate community and create a cohesive, well-integrated whole. I've seen her be a strong, clear advocate for Atlanta, particularly with regards to the city's business and growth potential. I've seen her establish new connections to ensure that the chamber and by extension, the business community is always staying fresh and accessible and is always in touch with emerging trends. And importantly, I've seen her show a sustained and genuine commitment to an inclusive Atlanta, where all have a real chance to participate and benefit in the powerful engine that is this city. And aside from all that, it has been a tremendous pleasure to see her joy as a grandmother and to see her passion and commitment to her family. I've really been privileged to see that as well. Now there's been a long running debate about women in the workforce with an overarching question about whether women can do it all. Well, Hala, you have done it all and it's been remarkable. So I salute you. I offer you my thanks for your partnership and friendship and I congratulate you for an award and recognition that is well-deserved. 
Thank you very much for this incredible offer. The TurkNet Leadership Group is a group that I've admired in Atlanta for years and years. So Bob and Lynn, thank you so much. Tino, thank you. You guys exemplify character and you exemplify giving back. So thank you very much for this honor. Hi there, I'm Paul Judge. And I would like to acknowledge and congratulate Hala on this Lifetime Achievement Award. I've had the pleasure of working next to Hala on some projects over the years, and I've seen her, her results. I've seen her tackle some of the hardest issues that face this city and face this region, from diversity and inclusion to healthcare, to job creation, to innovation. And every time she shows up, she shows up with a plan, she executes on it, and she does it with style and grace. So Hala, thank you for all that you do. You're a gift to the city and a gift to the world. And congrats on this well-deserved honor. When I think of Hala Model Mog, I absolutely know, I don't just think, I know she is the best representative, the icon, if you will, of the Turtnik Leadership Character Award. Hala understands. She understands business, how to delight the customer, how to serve and respect the employees, and how to ensure that the community is healthy. And what Hala does is bringing her own personal passion and purpose, the understanding of professional skills and expertise, and her own understanding of philanthropy, the intersection of all that we love about the integrity, respect, and responsibility of Turtnick. Yes, Hala Model Mog is the icon for the Turtnick Leadership Character Award. Hello, Hala. Congratulations on this wonderful award. You're awesome. Leading both profit companies, not-for-profit companies, uh, organizations, but most importantly, you're my pal and my friend. You and Steve are wonderful book buddies. I'm reading the book you just recommended uh, for me right now, Cast, and I'm finding it awesome. And uh, I also, you're an awesome uh, grandma. I've enjoyed watching you with your excitement of your new grandbaby. So I love you. You're the best. Congratulations. And I hope to see you in person soon. Bye. Congratulations, Hala, on this wonderful leadership award. You are a role model of respect, responsibility, and integrity, the main virtues that this award recognizes. We are all so grateful to you for the extraordinary impact that you've had on our city. Through your leadership of the Metro Chamber, Atlanta is undoubtedly better today. Thank you also for all that you do for the many nonprofits that you're part of, and especially Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. We celebrate you and we congratulate you on this well-deserved award. Hela, congratulations uh, on this, this honor, the Leadership Character Award. Uh, you are definitely following some great leaders that we have recognized in the past, most recently Ambassador Andrew Young. So congratulations. Thank you very much, Tino. I, I do consider that excellent company, so thank you. Hela, you've had an incredible career, and uh, obviously that's why we're recognizing you today. But you're also along the way been the first woman in many businesses, including in, as early as 1996, when you were the first woman to lead of a $1 billion international restaurant chain. And you were also the first woman to lead the Metropolitan Chamber in 2014. So do you see yourself as a woman that's broken through the glass ceiling? Well, Tino, I, I actually hope that I did have a little bit of influence when those jobs uh, came about, because there are certainly no reason that women shouldn't be in any and all leadership roles. So I, I hope that when those things happened, it did create a little room. And now we know that women are uh, leading so many organizations, and I'm, I'm very proud of all of them. So 1996, you were an early pioneer in terms of a woman leading a billion-dollar company. Did you experience bias at that time? 
You know, I really don't believe that I ever experienced any conscious bias, but I can say this, and I think we, to your point, everybody is is very concerned and, and hopefully much more aware of unconscious bias. It certainly happens in our world. We know that uh, people of color, women, LGBTQ, lots of people experience unconscious bias. And I think it's really up to all of us to try to learn, take a minute, and understand that we may be carrying with us unconscious bias that holds people back. That, that's really a great point. And when we think about it, in 96, you were an early pioneer. In 2014, there were more women leaders in, in various businesses across the world. But again, did you see anything change from 96 to 2014 in terms of how women were thought of in leadership roles? Yeah, a lot has changed. A lot has changed. And, and thankfully so. Again, back um, in the mid-90s when I was president of Church's Chicken, it, I was the first woman. And now there are many women leading uh, publicly traded companies as a CEO and have had very much success, certainly in that field. And I think we know there are lots of other fields where women are leading the way, more women college graduates, uh, more women in medical schools and that type thing. So a lot has changed, and I'm very glad about that, obviously. Well, you were one of the people that helped make that happen, and we really appreciate that. But does more still need to change? Do you see more change in the future, and how would you describe that in terms of what's needed? Well, sure. I mean, when you look at women CEOs of the Fortune 500, there's only a, you know, a handful and, and literally a handful. So there definitely needs to be more change. And I think back to our comments about unconscious bias, if we really start to learn what we do as humans to hold other human people, other human beings back, then I think that we can start to open up some of those avenues for everybody. Well, that's a, that's a great thought. I want to shift gears a little bit and ask you about some of your most important accomplishments as you see it. So at one point, you led the Susan B. Komen uh, organization, which I think everybody that's listening today is, knows that that's an extremely important organization. Can you name either Susan B. Komen or other organizations one or two business-related events where you and your teams had a life-changing impact? You know, and it, it, it is back to the teams. I mean, you always have to say that, Tino. So thank you for in including uh, that word because I've worked with some incredible teams at every job I've had. So I want to do a shout out to everyone. Back in the Komen um, days when I had that opportunity and really an honor to lead that organization, we did some things around the scientific research that I think could be life altering or at least uh, advancing the science. One of the years that I was there, we had $100 million in scientific research for a year. And the thing that was a little bit different about that year is we had learned that um, physician sci physicians, uh, physician scientists, investigators, the people who did the research to move the science and the cures forward were sometimes spending 25 to 50% of their times time looking for the money to do the research. So we were doing, you know, scientifically peer-to-peer -peer reviewed um, grant making, and we kind of said to ourselves, look, if these grants are peer reviewed and other scientists think that they're going to move the science forward, why not give them the full amount they're asking for? Let's say it's, it's 500,000. Uh, and in the old days, we might have given them 300,000 and they'd have to go out spending their time working on getting money versus driving the science. So we were very proud that that year we decided to give full grants to many of the young uh, scientists working. The other thing that we did that year, and I think it's a common practice now, is to do very large collaborative grants. And that means that the institutions are working together, they're sharing the data, and the criteria that we put on those grants was that you have to share the tissue samples and the results with anybody and everybody in the world. And I'm happy to say that I think that actions like that may have moved the science uh, forward faster for the cures for breast cancer. 
Hila, that, that sounds like a real game changer, and I know you're a cancer survivor, so uh, I'm sure it's more important to you, and we have uh, some issues in our family, so it's important to everyone, and it's great to see the progress is being made, and you were one of the leaders in that area. So let me shift gears a little bit and talk about character, because this is a Leadership Character Award, and you're certainly a person of character. Character has always been important, but it seems like today, it's got taken center stage between COVID, race relations, and government. How would you define leading with character? Leading with character is really about, at the end of the day, just doing the right thing. And I think most of us, our character is sort of built in our, in our homes, in the homes that we grew up with. And the thing that I would say is it's, it's never been difficult, frankly, to try to do the right thing. But the part that I'd add to it today is that people have to have the courage to speak out about things that they see that are wrong. And you know, back to unconscious bias or microaggressions, things that we see against um, people happening in the workplace, I think we haven't had the courage sometimes, maybe I haven't had the courage sometimes to speak up as much as we should. So. You can, you can have the character of doing the right thing, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty energized these days that people need to speak up and help carry the message, especially those of us who've had the opportunity to be in leadership positions and positions where we can potentially have an influence on the outcome for others. Yeah, well, that's a terrific point at TurkNet Leadership Group. We're doing a lot of work in the culture area, and we always talk about having courageous conversations. How do you create opportunities within a company or group of people to have courageous or brave conversations? So that's extremely important. And I also like your point about leaders need to step forward, and we all recognize that there's been points in our life where we most likely haven't been stepping forward the way that we need to. So let me ask you another question in this regard. How have you looked at bringing character into your own work and life? Well, you know, again, I kind of go back to the way I was raised. Uh, we were, you know, there was um, no daylight between doing the right thing and being um, the way we were raised. And one of my goals in life was to, as we kind of say in the South, to raise a decent family. You really wanted to make sure that your kids and the things you were involved with, people were doing the right thing. They were acting with integrity, acting with kindness, acting with uh, things that, again, can, can help others and not just yourself. So I, I was very fortunate to, to grow up in a home where, where character was a given. You were not going to um, get away with anything that um, my mother and father didn't think were right. And so, of course, I want to bring that in. And again, I've been so fortunate to work with so many incredible people, especially in this Atlanta market. Atlanta has been good to me. Atlanta is a phenomenal place, and I, I just remain enormously grateful. Well, you've made it very simple. Be a decent person. Bob and Lynn Turknet, in fact, have written a book called Decent People, Decent Company. And it's all about doing the right thing. So I'm with you 100%. So finally, is there any message you'd like to leave the audience around the importance of leading with character today? Well, Tino, I think that character is never more important. I mean, it's always just been such a, a, a baseline for, again, uh, us as human beings to, to do the right thing, to try to do the right thing, to treat each other uh, in ways that are empowering and, um, and kind and good to, to others. There, there is so much social injustice in the world, racial injustice, and there are things that need to be done differently. And if we come from a place of leading with character, and again, when we have the courage to speak out, uh, I think things can be better and will be better. So I, again, have been very fortunate in my career to work with people who are people of character and, and buoy me up. And I'd just like to thank all of them and to thank you once again. Um, I, I love um, what the TurkNet stand for and leading with character. What more can we really ask for? So thank you. Well, Hala, thank you very much. Thank you for leading a life of character and being a great example for the people of Atlanta and beyond. So thank you very much, and congratulations again on receiving this award. 
Thank you, Tino. Hala is being recognized for her leadership, for her character, and this Lifetime Achievement Award is really the epitome of who Hala is. You think about Hala, and you think about the Watts. Yeah, we've had tremendous success out of the Metro Chamber since she became president. But also, you think about the hows. How she's done it is what's really been impressive. Thinking about how to get things done through others, but also making sure that people are rewarded and recognized and uplifting others in our community. Hala has been a great leader for us all. And she is a model. When you think about how others look at other leaders, they want to think about, is that someone I want to follow or not? And Hala has been a model for all of us to follow. And I think this is a great recognition, having a Lifetime Achievement Award for you, Hala. And you think about the others that have had this. You are the sixth recipient of this significant reward. That means others that have had the impact on others' lives, six of them have been recognized. And you are one that we want to say thank you for all you've done. Thank you for the efforts you put forward, but also thank you for enriching our lives like you have done over the last several years as president of Metro Chamber. Well done, congratulations on this award. Hala, congratulations. Congratulations on being the recipient of the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award for Leadership Character. We both know that leadership is all about character. It's not about your title or what you do, but about who you are. And as I reviewed the leadership model characteristics, Hala, I said to myself, this is so Hala. Uh, integrity, responsibility, courage. You exhibit all the, those wonderful behaviors. But what stands out for me is the empathy, the level of empathy that you consistently show in all of your interactions with people. I love that about you, that you're able to identify with people and put yourself in other's shoes. And I think that's what makes you so special to me, even on a personal level. And I know you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I just wanted to say congratulations. I'm so proud of you. And this is so well-deserved and more than earned. So congratulations, my friend. Hala, congratulations on receiving this wonderfully well-deserved recognition from the TurkNet Leadership Group. It is such a reflection of who you are and how you got there. I realized when I was asked to share some comments that you have now achieved the one name rock star status. Everyone knows who Hala is. And it's such a reflection of your success as a corporate leader, as a community leader, as someone who has brought many people along on that journey and you're a tremendous role model in every way in raising a great family and being a great role model of inclusivity and uh, being a community leader and always stepping up. Thank you for that and thank you for working with me on so many great things. I look forward to continuing that. Congrats. Pleased to congratulate Hala on receiving the TurkNet Lifetime Leadership Award. I can't think of anybody that's more deserving than Hala. I first got to know Hala when she was working for Coleman for the Cure. And then uh, obviously when she led the chamber to new heights. And now I'm thrilled that she's agreed to become CEO of the Woodruff Arts Center and I get to work with her again. Hala is a fantastic leader. She's a great listener. She understands that people are the most important asset that any organization can have. And she's somehow always able to get those people to buy into her vision. Uh, I can't think of a better leader um, and someone who's more deserving than Hala Model Mod. Congratulations, Hala. I wanna take a moment to thank sponsors and donors for your support of the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Awards recognizing leadership character. Your contributions are going to support two very important organizations. Your Metropolitan Chamber has established a number of services that help to build educational excellence and expand workforce opportunities in the region. One example is Learn for Life, where MAC partners with local businesses, higher education institutions, and philanthropic organizations work together with eight school districts in and around Atlanta. 
Secondly, I'm proud to announce the establishment of a new nonprofit organization, the Leadership Character Youth Coalition. For over three decades, Bob and Lynn Turpnett have focused their life's work on leadership development. They recognized early on that the strongest leaders are the ones that lead with integrity, balancing respect and responsibility. Bob and Lynn created the leadership character model around those principles. Thousands of leaders from around the world have benefited. Today we're launching this new nonprofit with a goal of spreading the tenets of leadership character around the globe. Our aim is to instill the values represented in the leadership character model in youth across the world, thus multiplying the number of youth who will grow into adulthood with a set of fundamental values to live by and to share with others. Please reach out to me if you want to learn more about this new initiative. Thank you. On behalf of Bob and Lynn Turknet and the Turknet Leadership Group and the Metropolitan Chamber, I thank you all for coming and supporting Hala and her wonderful journey through life and the kinds of things she's accomplished. Thanks so much for attending today.